ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवा ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवा So we're hearing about the travels of Narada Muni as he's searching for the devotee who has received the greatest mercy from the Lord. And we heard how Narada had come to Hastinapur to glorify the Pandavas as being the greatest devotees. And Narada was describing how the Lord in all of his different incarnations, for example, all the different incarnations, avatars, they're coming from Vishnu. So when they kill some demon, they don't liberate them. People like Ravan and Kumbhakarn and Haranyakashipu and Haranyaksha, Many different demons were killed. Uh, Kalanemi is another one. They were different demons who were killed. They didn't get liberation. But when Lord Krishna kills the demons, he's very, very good, very merciful to them. And we were describing what happened, for example, with Kamsa, when after Krishna killed Kamsa, of course, Kamsa was, he was always absorbed in thinking of Krishna. He was very much worried that Krishna is going to come and kill him. And finally it happened, and Lord Krishna put his lotus foot on the chest of Kamsa and killed, killed him. But after he killed Kamsa, he arranged a big funeral, Vedic funeral for the death of the king. And he put the father of Kamsa on the throne. And then we heard also about uh, uh, other demons like Kaliya. Kaliya was also a demon. He'd come to the Yamuna River, poisoned the water there in the Yamuna River. But uh, Lord Krishna was so kind that after Kaliya had tried to strangle Krishna, held Krishna in his coils for a long time in the bottom of the Yamuna, but then Lord Krishna broke free from the coils of Kaliya. And he danced on the heads of Kaliya. So he punished Kaliya serpent. But then the wives of the Kaliya serpent, the Nagapatnis, came and they offered prayers to Lord Krishna and they begged Krishna to save their husband, not to kill their husband. So Krishna agreed, and he, but he told Kaliya that you have to leave this place. We don't want you here in the Yamuna River because you're poisoning the water for all the cows and the people. All the people in Vrindavan, they depend so much on the water of the Yamuna. So Lord Krishna sent Kali away. That you go away, there's an island in the middle of the ocean. You go and stay there on that island there. And you don't have to worry about Garuda. Kaliya had come to the Yamuna because he was afraid of Garuda. But Kaliya knew that if he goes to the Yamuna, there's a curse on Garuda, that if he came there, he would die. So Bari Muni had put some curse on Garuda, that if he was to come to the Yamuna to take fish again, he would die. And so Garuda, out of respect for the curse, he didn't go to the Yamuna, although he could have, because Garuda is more powerful than so the curse of Subhari Muni. Garuda is the direct servant of Lord, of Lord Vishnu. 
Anyway, Garuda respected the curse and he didn't go to the Yamuna and Kaliya knew that. So Kaliya was taking advantage. He was staying there in the Yamuna river so that Garuda wouldn't harm him. But Lord Krishna told Kaliya, now you have to leave. We don't want you in the in here in the Yamuna River. And you have to go to the but Lord Krishna promised Kaliya that you don't have to worry about Garuda because when I was dancing on your hoods, I have put some marks there on the hoods of the Kaliya snake. And those marks both they're signs that the lotus feet of Lord Krishna have touched the head of the Kaliya snake. And when Garuda sees these marks, he will recognize these marks as being the marks of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and he will respect you. And it happened that Kaliya and Garuda became friends after that. Although Garuda is a bird, and Kali is a snake, and usually snakes and birds are not friends. But from that time on, when Garuda saw the lotus feet on the hoods of Kaliya, Garuda accepted Kaliya as his friend. So that was uh, another example of Krishna, Krishna's kindness. So you have Kamsa, you have Kaliya, and then we spoke about Putana also, how Putana was, Lord Krishna was so kind to Putana that he took her to the spiritual world to be one of his nurses there in the spiritual, in the, in, in Goloka, in the topmost abode. So this was very special. And then also in the past, there were other demons who the Lord was kind to people like Bali, Bali Maharaj. Bali got special mercy from the Lord. Although Bali was the king of the demons and they conquered the heavenly planets, Lord Vamana Dev came and took everything away. But the Lord also said, I'm coming with you. I will come with you to the, the lower regions of the universe, to Sutala Loka, where Bali Maharaj resides, where all the demons reside there. And the Lord said, I'm coming there as your doorkeeper, and I will protect you from any disturbance. And it happened. It happened that at one point, Durvasa had come there, and Durvasa had come. with some demon who was disturbing Dwarka. But Lord Vamanadev said, no, no, I cannot leave Bali Maharaj here. I'm here to protect Bali Maharaj. I cannot just go, go with you just because you have something urgent. I'm staying here to take care of Bali Maharaj. So this was uh, the kindness of the Lord on different demons. Lord Ramachandra, he would give liberation. And he gave liberation to people like Sugriva and to Hanuman and to Guha, the Nishida. Different people, they all got liberation by the mercy of Lord Ramachandra, also Maharaj Dasara because Maharaj Dasarath was so attached to Lord Rama. So he was always thinking of Lord Rama and he gave up his body and separation from Lord Ram because Lord Rama had gone off in exile. And at that time, Maharaj Dasarath quit the material world. So he also got liberation. But although they got liberation, they didn't get prema. They didn't get the highest thing, the sweetest thing. So Narada Muni points out how fortunate the Pandavas were that 
they were getting so many sweet dealings by Lord Krishna with the Pandavas, that their dealings were very intimate and very sweet, which was not seen in other incarnations, other avatars. The Lord Krishna's very special affection for the Pandavas was clearly seen by how much Lord Krishna cared about the Pandavas and how much the Pandavas cared for Lord Krishna. And so in this way, Narada Muni is glorifying this wonderful relationship which the Pandavas have, that they were so fortunate, they were able to enjoy the very special affection of Lord Krishna which other people, while they were maybe devotees, they didn't get the same intimacy. They were, not in, they were not able to appreciate the Lord in the same intimate way as the Pandavas. Because the Lord would personally come and stay with the Pandavas. He would come there to Hastinapur and stay with them. And it's said that even the, the great sages would come from the forest, they would come there and they would stay with the Pandavas just to be there with Lord Krishna. Because Lord Krishna is the all-attractive Supreme Personality of Godhead. So all of the great sages, they were all eager to enjoy that opportunity to be with Lord Krishna. So this was the, these facts are very special. Let's see, we'll, we'll go on. Narada Muni becomes so ecstatic in glorifying the Pandavas that he's not able to control his own tongue. And to stop his tongue, he sees he took hold of his tongue with his teeth. He seized it, he bit, you know, just like you bite your tongue. So Narada Muni was biting his tongue just to stop himself because he was becoming so ecstatic in chanting the glories of, of the Lord and the, and the greatness of Lord Krishna. And then Narada Muni, he begins to address his tongue. He says, dear tongue, this effort of yours attests to your great fortune. As far as you are able, just go on speaking something about these beloved devotees of Krishna. So this is Narada Muni's mood. You see, he wants to go on speaking the glories of Lord Krishna. He doesn't want to stop. This is the nature of people on the level of Baba and Prima, that they cannot stop glorifying the Lord. So Narada Muni is appreciating the wonderful qualities. And he, he doesn't want to he doesn't want to stop. But he feels himself inadequate. He says that Lord Brahma, he has four tongues. And Lord Brahma, he, with his four tongues, he cannot properly describe the Lord. And what to speak of Lord Brahma having four tongues? Lord Anantashesha has a thousand tongues. And with his thousand tongues, He's not able to fully describe the glories of the Lord. So Narada Muni thinks, if Brahma can do it with his four tongues, and Lord Ananta Shesha has a thousand tongues, and he cannot properly glorify the Lord, how will I ever be able to glorify the Lord? I only have one tongue. This is a position, you see. This is the wonderful uh, nature of Narada Muni. He's appreciating his own inadequacy. 
in trying to glorify the Lord. That there, there's just so much can be said. But how much can we say? And so Narada Muni is lamenting his own condition, that he only has one tongue. Narada Muni continues, O oh, great saintly Pandavas, is anyone bold enough to let his tongue describe the unique, the unique love for Krishna that each of you have, or the special mercy he bestows upon you? So the fact is, the Pandavas did have this very wonderful opportunity that they were able to, to receive the Lord's mercy, the special mercy which the Lord bestowed on them. But Narada Muni wants to bring it to the attention of the Pandavas. He wants them to understand their good fortune. Sometimes, you know, when we are in the position of good fortune, we don't always appreciate. Just like when Srila Prabhupada was with us, we appreciated Prabhupada, but we didn't fully appreciate Prabhupada. And it was only after he left, then we appreciated Prabhupada so much more. We were thinking how fortunate we had been to be with Prabhupada. And we never properly took full advantage of that association. And after he goes, then you lament. And so similarly, it happens that like the Pandavas, they're there and they're associating with Lord Krishna. But Lord Krishna is not always going to be with them. Sometimes he, because Lord Krishna has to come to Hastinapur to be with the Pandavas and he will have to leave Dwarka. So when Lord Krishna will leave Dwarka, then all the people in Dwarka, they're, all be, they're feeling the pain of separation, that Krishna has gone. And they're so anxious, when will he come back? Hmm? So we were describing earlier how the Pandavas were, they were planning how to bring Krishna to Hastinapur. They were saying, maybe we could tell him we're going to have a yagya. Maybe he will come if we have a big yagya. Or maybe we will tell him the demons are attacking us. We need your help. Somehow or other, they're thinking how to attract Krishna to come. And, but at the same time, the people in Dwarka, they want Krishna there in Dwarka. Oh, they're doing a yagya. We also do a yagya. We also have demons attacking us. Oh, why you go to Hastinapur? You should be here with us in Dwarka. Don't leave us like this. Devotees were always trying to attract Srila Prabhupada. Prabhupada was very fond of mangoes. He liked mangoes. Coming from Calcutta, you know, mangoes are quite common there. And so uh, he, Prabhupada had sent the one lady, Govinda Devi Dasi. And she was a, a young lady who joined the Krishna consciousness movement with her husband. Her husband was named Gorsunda. And so Prabhupada had sent them to Hawaii to open a temple for the Krishna consciousness movement. So at one point, Govinda Devidasi, she, she was very deeply attached to Srila Prabhupada. She loved Prabhupada very much. And she, was, she had been like Prabhupada's secretary for him. They were both artists also. They did beautiful paint, pencil drawings, which were originally put in the teachings of Lord Chaitanya. If you ever get an old, old edition of the teachings of Lord Chaitanya, 
you'll see these beautiful black and white pencil drawings. So they did them, they did these drawings. Later on, somehow they took them out and they put these color pictures in. But I personally, I like these pencil drawings. They were much, much more vivid and very attractive. Anyway, Govinda Devi Dasi wrote to Prabhupada that Prabhupada, the mangoes are just coming into season now. Now it's the best time to come to Hawaii. Mangoes are just coming into season. So you should please come right away. <laughs> so Prabhupada wrote back to her. He said, oh, he said, I'm very pleased to hear that you're happy there in Hawaii. And I'm happy to hear that the mangoes are coming into season. But he said, I have to go to Russia. He said, I'll be preaching Krishna consciousness in the snows of Russia. So he said, preaching in the snows of Russia is sweeter than the sweetest mangoes. So in this way, Prabhupada told her that, yeah, mangoes are nice, but there's something better. And that is preaching. Even if you're in the snow of Moscow, it's sweeter than the sweetest mangoes. All right, so uh, devotee Narada Muni is appreciating the topics of Lord Krishna. And the special mercy which Krishna bestows on him. And so then he talks about, he says, your, your mother, mother meaning Kunti, she once heard from the mouth of a Krura, a single statement by Krishna, sweet with affection and meant to console her. As soon as she heard it, she plunged into a swiftly flowing current of prema. So this incident, this is described how uh, Akrura, after Akrura had brought Krishna and Balaram to Mathura, then at one point, Lord Krishna requested Akrura to go to Hastinapur to see how the how Duryodhan is dealing with the Pandavas. Lord Krishna was concerned about the welfare of the Pandavas, so much so that he asked Akrura to go there to Hastinapur and observe and see what's going on. So you can read in that, in that chapter of the Krishna book how Akrura goes there and he meets with Vidura as well as Prita or Queen Kunti. And he meets with Queen Kunti. And of course, Queen Kunti, she knows what's happening. She knows about all the atrocities which are being committed against her sons. Duryodhan and all of his brothers, they're very envious of the Pandavas. And they are always planning how to rid the world of the Pandavas. So they tried so many different things. We you know they they built a house out of shellac, and they told the Pandavas, "This is for you. We built this just for you. Very special, beautiful house, but it was made of shellac, and the nature of shellac is." highly inflammable. So anyway, the plan was to put the Pandavas in there and during the night, set fire to the house. And so it happened, the Pandavas had gone to live there. And one night it happened that they, the, the, the Kauravas set fire to the house, but the Pandavas had made a plan and they were able to escape safely. And so for some time, people thought the Pandavas were all dead. But then when it came to Draupadi's uh, archery contest, the Swayamvar, then at that time, 
Then Arjuna came and he won the hand of Draupadi and he took her as his wife. And then people knew the Pandavas are not dead, they're all alive. So that was one attempt on the Pandavas. And then, of course, they'd given poison. They'd given poison to Bhim. They tried to kill Bhim. They knew Bhim has a voracious appetite. So they gave him a lot of food, but there was a lot of poison in it. So Bhima ate the food. He ate the food. He's very, he, he's a, uh, he, he has, his name is Rikudar, right? One who has a, he has a big appetite, but at the same time, he can perform Herculean tasks. So Prabhupada said, if you want to eat good like Bhima, you have to also work good like Bhima. You have to perform Herculean tasks, and then you're worthy to eat like Bhima. Anyway, Bhima ate the poison food, and so then they thought, oh, good, he's dead. And so they knocked his body into the lake. But in that lake, there were poison fish. And the poison fish, when the body of Bhima came in the bottom of the lake, the poison fish began to bite Bhima's body. And the poison from the fish counteracted the poison from the food which Bhima had eaten. And in this way, Bhima recovered. And so he was saved. And then, of course, there was the gambling match. And the Pandavas lost all of their wealth. And they, they were even told to bet with their wife that Draupadi was to be put as a wager. And the Pandavas, because they were Kshatriyas, they cannot refuse a challenge. And so it happened that Draupadi was also lost in the gambling match. And at that time, they tried to disrobe Draupadi. And her husbands could do nothing to help her. But of course, Lord Krishna came to save her. Draupadi showed her chastity, her faithfulness as a devotee. Her husbands, five husbands could not help her, but she called to Lord Krishna. And Lord Krishna came in the form of the unlimited sari. And in this way, Mother Draupadi kept her chastity and proved her greatness as a devotee. Actually, what was planned to disgrace Draupadi only glorified her more because it showed her glory as a very chaste woman. And her chastity and her faith in Lord Krishna was revealed. And that established her as the, the great devotee for which we know her today. And then after that, then there was the battle of Kurukshetra. So after the, after, well, Draupadi's attempt to di di disrobe her, then the Pandavas, they had lost more gambling match. They had to go into exile for 12 years or 14 years. And then after the exile came over, there was one year incognito, and then they came back. Then it was time for the Kurukshetra war. So in this way, Mother Kunti was suffering so much. And Akrura, he had been told by Lord Krishna, you go and find out what's happening in Hastinapur. Lord Krishna is so concerned for his devotees. He wants to know what is happening. How are they treating the Pandavas? So that's told there in, in the... Srimad Bhagavatam, how Akrura hears about what's happening in Hastinapur, and how Mother Kunti, hearing about Krishna, she awakens Krishna Prem, because Queen Kunti is also a great devotee, not an ordinary soul. So then Narada describes more about Kunti. He said, Kunti often lamented with poignant words that could better or that could shatter the heart of anyone who heard them. 
and she bore the burden of love for all of you, staying tied to you only because you are very dear to Lord Krishna. So Mother Kunti is described that it wasn't that she was just attached to her sons, but it was because her sons were devotees of Krishna. That was the important. It was the love for Krishna which they had. Krishna was the life of the Yadus, and he tried for a long time to leave for Dwarka, but by enveloping him with plaintive prayers, she kept him in her home. Narada's describing about Queen Kunti, how she's such a great devotee, that although Krishna had come there to Hastinapur for the, you know, to be with the Pan, he wants to go back to Dwarka. Of course, after the Kurukshetra war was over, Krishna was ready to go back to Dwarka. But, of course, then there was Ashwatthama. Ashwatthama threw Brahmastra weapon. Uttara had come running to Krishna for protection. And Krishna had protected Uttara, protected the child in her womb. Then Krishna wants to go to Dwarka. But then Kunti comes. And Kunti begins to offer her prayers, right? The prayers of Queen Kunti, which are there in the first canto, chapter eight. Beautiful prayers. Queen Kunti is praying to Krishna. Prayers like Krishnaya Vasudevaya, Devaki Nandanaya Cha, Nanda Gopakomaraya, Govindaya Namo Namaha. Namo Pankaja Nabaya, Namo Pankaja Malane, Namo Pankaja Netraya, Namaste Pankajangrai. Like this, Lord, Lord Krishna is being glorified by Queen Kunti's prayers. And these prayers are so meaningful and so touching that Lord Krishna becomes conquered. Lord Krishna is Ajita. He is unconquerable, but he becomes conquered by the pure love of his devotees. So it's not just mechanical recitation of some prayers, but it's the feeling of the heart. Because Queen Kunti offered these prayers from her heart. So the Lord was overwhelmed with love for Queen Kunti. And in this way, he could not leave. He couldn't leave and just go to Dwarka. Then Narada talks about how Lord Krishna bestowed upon Yudhisthira the highest prestige, greater than that of anyone else in the upper and lower worlds. What did he give to Yudhisthira? Well, he allowed Yudhisthira to perform the Rajasuya sacrifice. That was the arrangement of Lord Krishna. With the help of Lord Krishna, they could perform that Rajasuya yagya. Maharaj, Lord Krishna wants to glorify Maharaj Yudhisthira, not just simply as a king, not just simply as one tiny ruler of a kingdom on this planet, but he wants to glorify him as being the, the greatest, uh, the, 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 the su most supreme personality in both the upper and lower worlds, in the whole universe, in other words. Lord Krishna wants to glorify his devotee like this. And he did that by the battle of Kurukshetra, that Maharaj Yudhisthira could become the ruler of the world. And then Lord Krishna also arranged for Bhima to be glorified. And how did he arrange for the glorification of Bhima? By having Bhima kill Jarasandha. Lord Krishna fought with Jarasandha 17 times and defeated him. 
Every time he could have killed Jarasandha. He never did it. The 18th time, Jarasandha thought he won. Actually, Jarasandha really didn't win. It was just a, a game Krishna was playing. Krishna took him up to, because Kalayavna was coming at the same time. So Krishna took Kalayavna up the mountain and Muchikunda burned Kalayavna to ashes. But Jarasandha was thinking, I won. I won the 18th battle. Anyway, when it came time for the Rajasuya Yagna, they have to get, they have to uh, have the submission of all the other kings. So they knew Jarasandha would never accept submission to the, to, the Kaur, to the Pandavas. But at the same time, Lord Krishna wants to glorify Jarasandha because he knows Jarasandha is very charitable. He'll, and he likes to follow the Vedic culture. The Vedic culture was to give charity to brahmanas and to perform yagnas. So Lord Krishna knew this. So Lord Krishna came there with Arjuna and Bhima. And they came to Jarasandha to beg. They came disguised as brahmanas and they begged. And what, did they, what charity did they want? They want we want a fight. We want to fight you. But Jarasandha said, well, I'm not going to fight Krishna. Ah, he ran away last time I fought him. He's the coward. He's Ranchor. I'm not going to fight him. And he said, if I fight Arjuna, Arjuna, he wouldn't be a good match for me. He's not strong enough. He said, but Bhima, you give me a good fight. You want to fight? I'll fight Bhima. And so this was the deal. Jarasandha went to fight with Bhima. And Bhima is so powerful, but still he couldn't defeat Jarasandha until finally Lord Krishna showed him the, the secret that Jarasandha, he was joined by the witch Jara. And Lord Krishna took a twig and split, split it down the middle. He said, in this way you can defeat Jarasandha. So Bhima came forward. And he grabbed one of Jarasandha's legs and he held the other leg with his foot. And then he ripped him right down the middle. He ripped him right into two halves and he threw the two halves far away from each other. And in this way, Jarasandha was killed. And so Lord Krishna arranged the glory of Bhima, <clears throat> that Bhima could defeat Jarasandha. Although, and Jarasandha is also glorified because Jarasandha was following the Vedic culture. He was, he was giving his charity. It was very nice. And then we hear also about uh, Arjuna. Arjuna. Arjuna became renowned for his intimate friendship with Krishna. Narada Muni said, even if I had hundreds of mouths, I could never speak all the glories of Arjuna. So Arjuna, the intimate friend and the one who hears the Bhagavad Gita. And so he's very special, intimate relationship with Lord Krishna. And then he also glorifies Nakula and Sahadev. In this way, all the five Pandavas are being glorified. Nakula and Sahadev, what did they do? Well, at the Rajasuya sacrifice, they had to choose the person who is most worthy of worship. So Nakula and Sahadev chose Lord Krishna. And they stood up and said, Lord Krishna is the most worshipable person. Of course, this greatly agitated the mind of Sishupal. And the Sishupal became very disturbed. And at that time, Lord Krishna had to decapitate Sishupal. But Nakula and Sahadev, they were inst the instigators. They glorified that Lord Krishna, he is the most worshipable person. We should all worship him. And so it was greatly appreciated how Nakula and Sahadev spoke 
the glories of Lord Krishna in the assembly of the Rajasuya Yagya, so that Maharaj Yudhisthira could perform this Rajasuya Yagna. In this way, Narada Muni is glorifying all the different Pandavas, how they're all great devotees. Just see all the wonderful things which they did. Oh, oh he, he, then Narada Muni speaks about how at the time of the Rajasuya Yagna, Lord Krishna personally sanctified the head of Draupadi. He sanctified her hair. And he would call Draupadi as dear friend. And he, he took away any fear which uh, Draupadi had about Durvasa. Because we know Durvasa would often come with all of his disciples. And you're supposed to feed all the disciples. When the guru comes with all the disciples, you're supposed to feed all the, the guru and all the disciples. So Durvasa was sometimes coming there to the home of the Pandavas and Draupadi would have to deal with it. But Lord Krishna would come to help her. We know how Durvasa came one time and there was only some tamarind leaf left in the pot. But Draupadi offered it to Krishna and Krishna was satisfied. And when Krishna was satisfied, because Krishna is the super soul in everyone's heart, Durvasa and all of his disciples were all satisfied and nobody felt any more hunger and they didn't come for the food anymore. So that was the arrangement of Lord Krishna, how he helped Draupadi. And then also uh, And then Dushasan, that Dushasan who tried to disrobe Draupadi. So Krishna came as her sari, he protected her. So that you can see the relationship there between Draupadi and Kunti and the Pandavas, how much Lord Krishna helped them all in their times of their difficulty. All right, so then the last thing is we hear about Vidura and how Lord Krishna relished the porridge of Vidura. Duryodhan pre prepared a big feast with ghee, but Krishna said, no, no, I'm not hungry. It's okay. I have a bad stomach today. I'm not hungry. But Vidura came with porridge and Krishna enjoyed it. He relished it. So this was the, this is again Krishna's relationship with his devotees. And uh, Lord Krishna also organized at the time of Lord Grandfather Bhishma leaving the world, Krishna organized the ceremony, the passing away ceremony of the great general Grandfather Bhishma. Lord Krishna had personally come there. And after Bhishma departed, Lord Krishna organized the funeral ceremony. So, Vidura and Bhima, Bhishma rather, they were both dear, dear devotees of Lord Krishna. Although grandfather Bhishma was on the side of the Kauravas, still he was very devoted to Lord Krishna. And Vidura is also from Lord Krishna's uh, pastimes, very deeply attached to Krishna. And he'd helped so much in the pastimes to protect the Pandavas. He'd warned the Pandavas about the house of Shilak, be careful there. And so, there were so many things to be grateful for. The dealings, the loving dealings between Krishna 
and the Pandavas and Draupadi, Bhishma, Vidura, they're all the devotees. So they're, they all had wonderful reciprocation from Lord Krishna. And this is why Narada Muni is glorifying them, that you're, you're all the greatest devotees, because the Lord cared so much about you. But you'll hear the Pandavas will say, no, 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 no. Listen, you've got it all wrong. <laughs> they will tell Narada Muni that, look, if we were the great devotees, nobody will ever become a devotee. Look how we suffered. We suffered so much. If we're going to be a great devotee, you have to suffer like us. Nobody will ever become a devotee. In this way, the Pandavas, they don't. They, but they say, you go to the Yadus, the Yadavas. They're good people. So that's the next, next stage. After we hear about, we've heard about the glories of the, the, the Pandavas. The Pandavas are going to tell us the glories of the, the Yadus. And particularly in the Yadus, there is Uddhava, who is the topmost of all the Yadus, the greatest devotee. And they're saying, he is the great devotee. Go to him. All right? So we'll stop here today. Any questions? Hare Krishna, dear devotees. So today, uh, uh, Maharaj will be leaving to Hyderabad. So today is the last day we could hear from Maharaj for this visit. Uh, Maharaj will be going to Hyderabad today and from that to Mayapur. There are many devotees from China also who are waiting for Maharaj's association in Mayapur. So Maharaj has to leave today. So we wanted to express our gratitude and wanted to thank Maharaj for the wonderful association that we received. Uh, it was like a very great mercy for a good long period of time. I'm sure all the devotees will be missing the wonderful lectures which Maharaj gave uh, almost daily morning. Very, very crystal clear explanation and uh, the pastimes from Brihad Bhagavata Amrita. And uh, I still remember one of the uh, questions which Maharaj had answered of mine that how we should not be gradual in our approach to Krishna consciousness but we need to be putting ourselves in the fire otherwise if our approach is gradual then our progress will also be gradual and how Pro um, Maharaj explained about Prabhupada always chasing the rhinos it was very inspiring for me uh, personally and I am sure all the devotees would have got so nice uh, uh, experience uh, by the questions which were so nicely answered by Maharaj patiently almost every day. And not only that, Maharaj also was accompanying in the most of our festivals and activities like uh, Balram Jayanti, Janmashtami, Rupad Appearance Day, children's uh, uh, program which was inaugurated above in the first floor. And then Maharaj accompanied in the youth uh, yatra, small yatra in the Narsimha temple. So Maharaj was always with us, encouraging. He gave association to the Brahmacharis also. So we are so very grateful to Maharaj uh, and for enlivening us, enthusing us in our Krishna consciousness. Uh, and Nagar Kirtan, especially. Yeah, I forgot. Uh, Saturday is distributing the pamphlets. Uh, so we are almost, everybody is so much uh, enthused and um, appreciated the nature of Maharaj. And uh, they got so much enlivened in Krishna consciousness. So we uh, not only deeply thank Maharaj and also beg for forgiveness in case there are any inconveniences in our services or any deficiencies. And I would like to pray and hope that we will get Maharaj's association in the coming future uh, whenever possible uh, in ICC. 
uh, and also we would like to uh, thank the devotees uh, who uh, helped uh, in the services to Maharaj, uh, especially Upendra Prabhu and uh, Tulsi Mataji, who were always there to help us arrange for the uh, prasadam and many other services towards Maharaj. So let us thank once uh, Hare Krishna Mantra and express our gratitude from the bottom of our heart for His Holiness uh, uh, Bhakti Vigdaminash Narsimha Swami Maharaj. Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Srila Prabhupada Ki Chai. His Holiness Bhakti Vigdaminash Narsimha Swami Maharaj Ki Chai. Go back to Brinda Ki. Devotees can come and take prasadam from Maharaj person. <laughs>